Have you ever copied a component and then went to make an independent copy with this paste new command and then wished, well, gee, what if I needed to make some changes to the paste new component from the original? That would be very nice. And that's what this Fusion 360 video is about. So I have a component here. I've colored it red to make sure you keep your eyes on it. And I grounded it. So I'm going to make an independent copy, but it, have it still linked to this master component that I can change the master component and have it propagate forward. To do this, we're not going to use the actual copy and paste new command at first. We're going to use the boundary fill. So go to boundary fill, and this word only works on bodies. So if you try to select the component in the browser, you will not get it. You can select the body but it's just as easy to click on the component in the graphics display. Pick on that, then you pick the cell, there'll probably only be one, and you want to make a new component, not a new body, and do not remove the original. Say OK. Now there's my second component. I'm going to click on it and move it out to the side. There's my original, there's my new component. I'm now going to make a copy of this one, independent of, it, of this one, but still linked back to the original. So I'll go back to, to the traditional copy and paste new commands. So I'll click on this one, copy, not cut, copy, and then go over and paste new. I'll move it off to make sure it's visibly seen. So we have three components but they're all still linked back to the original piece. First of all, we want to prove that these are independent. Let's do that. I'm going to modify this one first. So I'll make it active in the browser. I'll make a new sketch on this surface. I'm going to capture design. Now I'm going to be just putting in some simple shapes. I'm not going to constrain them for just to keep this thing a little shorter but you should constrain all your sketches in real time. So I'm going to go ahead and extrude this all the way through as a cut. As you can see, it didn't affect the original, nor the copy, or and paste new, which is understood. Now let's go ahead and, and do something to this one. So I activate the third component. I'll go ahead and make a new sketch on this side. Again, I'm just going to put an unconstrained sketch on it, but you remember you should be constraining your sketch fully. I'm going to put it all the way through as a whole. And as you can see, it doesn't affect this one or the original. It is truly independent. So now let's go back and show you where the real magic comes in. I'll go back to the top level, activate it. Be sure you are following your activations. In the original, I can either drag the timeline back or just simply go in my timeline and I'm going to go and add a feature right after the shell. I'm going to put a square hole in the bottom of this one. So I'm going to do a new sketch. In the bottom of this, I'm going to draw me a, again, a rectangle. You should constrain all your sketches. I'm just going to do that, not do this for time's sake. And I'm going to extrude all the way through as a cut. As you can see, it got a hole in that. Now, if I put my timeline back, that hole, that rectangular hole appears in all, all of them. So it shows you that the original, because of the boundary fill, is translated into the independent copies. Remember, this was the boundary fill, the first one. And from then on, if you copy and paste new from this one, They'll all be independent, but dependent on the original. This also works with modifying features, such as this original size. Let's go back to the original sketch, edit the sketch, and let's change this from 4, let's make it 3, and let's make it a little bit longer. Let's make it 7. So I've changed a basic feature of the original. If I say OK, as you can see, all three components are the same in that respect. So this opens up a whole new realm of designing possi possibilities in Fusion 360.